order for your system to function properly, it is necessary to complete the re-system programming matrix. This Microsoft Excel file should be provided to you by your project coordinator. When you open the document, you will notice that there are multiple tabs across the bottom of the program. It is imperative that the proper information is filled out for each tab. In this video, we will go through each one of the tabs in order because some of the information in later tabs is dependent on information you put in the tabs before it. On the first tab marked Cover Page, you will notice a message from Reese Scientific that emphasizes the timely completion of this document prior to the technician's arrival. Please also note that a programming matrix will need to be completed for each node you have purchased. Fill out the information on this page by clicking the empty boxes and entering your order number, node number, name, and the date. Now we can move on to the next tab, Customer Info. Type in your institution name and address here. This information will appear at the top of all system reports. In the Global Options tab, we can input the necessary information for emailing capabilities. This will be used as a notification system if an input goes into alarm. Please be sure to read the comments to the right of the boxes and ask a sales rep for additional assistance if necessary. The next section deals with programming logging options. You will notice that there are two sets of options to set. The first deals with the sampling interval for when the alarm is in normal range. The second option is for the time interval samples when the input is in alarm. These alarm ranges will be defined when we get to the Probe Programming tab. In addition to email notifications, we can also notify people by phone when an input goes into alarm in the Phone Directory Programming tab. Remove the sample names and enter any contacts that you might want the system to notify. Be sure to include any necessary digits to dial out of the building if necessary. For demonstration purposes, I'm going to leave the sample names and just add phone numbers. We will organize these contacts and create phone lists in the next tab. You can set up to 100 phone lists for each node. Please note that the order of the list will be the order that the phone numbers are dialed, so enter them accordingly. Name each phone list in the yellow boxes and select a contact from the drop-down menu. You'll notice that these names correspond to the information we entered in the previous tab. These phone lists will be assigned to specific inputs in the Probe Programming tab. In this section of the document, we will specify alarm ranges and alarm notification options. A few lines have been filled out for you as an example. Remember to remove all of this information and replace it with your own. If you mouse over each of the heading boxes, you will find descriptions to further assist you in this process. Select one of the phone lists you made in the last tab from the drop-down menu if you wish to use the phone notification system. In addition to or in place of the phone list, you can add email addresses in the last column for alarm notifications. Remember to separate addresses with a semicolon. Moving on to the access code tab, we can set permissions for users in the system. At the top of this page, you will see definitions for different user types. Enter users into the boxes below and use the definitions to create the appropriate permission levels. In the next tab, we will set up the options for the system monitoring sensors. For each of these sensors, you will find a brief description of the function and options for an alarm delay, email function, and phone list. Recommended alarm delay values are already entered, but you can enter the information that best suits your needs. Once you have completed this section, be sure to head back to the cover page, date the document, and return it to your project coordinator.